Does red meat cause cancer? According to the World Health Organization, processed red meat is now considered as carcinogenic as smoking, and even unprocessed red meat is labeled as likely carcinogenic. My name is Dr. Ray Heinisch, host of the weight loss podcast, Cut the Fat Podcast, along with my awesome co-host, Blythe Alberg. So what is a carcinogen anyway? It's simply any compound that can potentially cause cancer. Carcinogens are everywhere and can even be found in herbs, coffee, teas, and other foods labeled as healthy. Just because something is potentially cancer-causing doesn't mean that cancer is guaranteed if you consume it. Just like smoking one cigarette doesn't guarantee that you'll develop lung cancer. Usually, you must consume carcinogens in large quantities and fairly often to increase your risk. Therein lies the problem. We do consume a lot of meat. And many of us love red meat. So why are they picking on red meat anyway? Red meat, especially processed red meat, is loaded in certain compounds called heterocyclic amines and nitroso compounds, advanced glycation end products, and more. These compounds are potent carcinogens and can be consumed in large quantities over extended periods of time through our diet. For example, some people like to drink aloe vera juice for digestive health. Although the aloe vera plant does contain certain compounds that can be labeled as carcinogens, we aren't consuming enough aloe to impact our risk of cancer. Meat, however, is consumed by the pounds each week by many people across the world, and much of that comes in processed forms such as lunch meat, bacon, and hot dogs. So yes, Red meat can increase your risk of cancer if consumed in larger quantities over extended periods of time. So here's my seven step action plan to decrease cancer risk in us happy meat eaters. Step one, limit unprocessed red meat to a maximum of two to three times weekly. Now we don't have enough research to be able to say for sure what the minimum dose of meat is on a daily or weekly basis to cause a significant increased risk of cancer, but I'm pretty sure that two to three times weekly can be safe for the majority of the population. Step two, limit processed red meat to one time or less per week. This is a big one because this seems to be where the majority of the risk lies in foods such as bacon, hot dogs, and lunch meat. So try to limit this to one time or less per week. Now, if you go to a baseball game and you wanna have a hot dog from time to time, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world. Remember, the dose makes the poison. So if you get it from time to time, don't worry about it, enjoy it, savor it. Just don't make this a regular part of your diet. Step three, choose white meat when possible. So the majority of the research suggests that white meat isn't problematic as it pertains to cancer risk. So we probably don't have to limit it to the same extent that we do red meat. So choose things like fish and chicken and other forms of poultry in place of red meat to decrease your risk of consuming carcinogens. Step four is choose organic grass-fed meat when possible. Now, there is some controversy out there as to whether or not organic grass-fed meat is worth the extra expense. To me, if you can afford it, absolutely go organic, go grass-fed. Now, with red meat, there seems to be specific problems associated just with the red meat itself. Whether it's organic or conventional, it still is potentially cancer-causing when consumed in large quantities. But we also know that pesticides that can build up in fatty meats especially, will increase that risk further. So if you're gonna buy beef or any other fatty cut of meat, I recommend choosing organic grass-fed whenever possible. If, however, you're going for a cut of chicken breast, like a very lean chicken breast, I don't know that it's worth the extra expense because there's not a lot of fat in that meat to concentrate those pesticides. So it may be more worthwhile to spend that extra money on an extra bag of vegetables. So that's the bottom line. When possible, choose organic grass-fed. If you don't have the money, then try to choose lean cuts of meat that will be lower in fat and thus lower in pesticide residues. Step five, 
cook your meat enough, but not too much. Red meat in and of itself, cooked and uncooked, is potentially carcinogenic, but how you cook your meat will determine just how carcinogenic the meat will become. When we cook our meat on high heat, especially on an open flame, we significantly increase the risk of cancer-causing compounds called heterocyclic amines. So we want to cook our meat with the lowest temperature possible to make the meat safe and tasty, and hopefully, if possible, without an open flame because the open flame chars the meat and the char is where you'll find a lot of the heterocyclic amines. So try to cook your meat enough, but not too much. Always eat vegetables whenever you eat meat. Research suggests that when we consume vegetables with the meat, it can potentially help to sequester some of those cancer-causing compounds. That's especially the case with cruciferous vegetables and really deep green vegetables that bring a lot of chlorophyll into the digestive tract. So try to eat your vegetables with your meat. How much? I like to aim for at least four times the volume of vegetables as meat. So if you eat one palm-sized amount or one palm-sized serving of meat, try to eat a serving of vegetables that is four palm-sized in order to counteract some of the negative effects associated with that meat. Step seven is to supplement with two supplements, especially for those of us who eat a lot of meat. Supplement number one is called SGS. This is a compound found in cruciferous vegetables that seems to help decrease the carcinogenic nature of some of these compounds. Also, SGS appears to enhance the metabolism of the compounds when they enter the blood that may help our body to get rid of some of these carcinogens that we consume. The other one's called chlorophyllin, and chlorophyllin appears to bind to many of these carcinogens, especially the heterocyclic amines, and prevent them from damaging the DNA within the digestive tract. So when you consume chlorophyll or you take a chlorophyllin capsule at the same time as you consume meat, it may be able to decrease the carcinogenic nature of some of these compounds by up to 90%. So look for that supplement chlorophyllin. Usually you supplement with 100 milligrams per meal and uh, that should provide at least some protection from some of these nasty compounds. If you found this short video helpful, I recommend checking out the full blog post at cutthefatpodcast.com where I go into a lot more detail about what it is in red meat that is potentially cancer causing. And I go into more detail surrounding these seven action steps where you'll get more tips and tricks for decreasing the carcinogenic load associated with consumption of meat. So I hope you've enjoyed this. We'll see you next time on Cut the Fat Podcast.